Today we're going to an island off the coast of Africa where homes cling to the edge of steep volcanic cliffs and bright tropical plants contrast with the dark volcanic rocks. Yes, this is the island of Maveda and we're going to explore some remarkable places. About 600 miles southwest of the coast of Portugal, Madeira is a small archipelago of several Portuguese islands that had a violent volcanic past. A hot mantle plume gave rise to a seamount as the mid-Atlantic rifted apart. And although many geologists consider this island to be created by a volcanic hotspot, others propose that plate tectonic faulting and uplift probably contributed to its volcanic history as well. So let's take a look at this sequence of events. About 5.6 to 7 million years ago, some of the earliest eruptions probably happened and uplift of the submarine seamount occurred. Then, 5.6 to 2.5 million years ago, we had an emergent phase that included interlayering basalt flows and pyroclastic flows. Then about 2.5 to 1 million years ago, we had the shield building phase with numerous lava flows to create the very large shield volcano. Then, from one million years ago to the present time, we had the mature phase with erosion and multiple minor cinder cone eruptions and flows. So now let's take some walks around the island to see some interesting features. Hiking in the highlands reveals corridors of miles of small aqueducts called levados that bring water from up high down to where it's needed. One of the things about Mabeda is the uh, proliferation of water. And you can see in this canyon here, from all the volcanic rock seeps, there is an abundance of water feeding waterfalls throughout this area. So there's really no shortage of water. Um, this is a pretty steep canyon. The sides are nearly vertical. And right at the top, there are a couple of impressive waterfalls. Water as we shall soon see, played a very important role in the erosion of various volcanic layers. And without it, it would be hard to unveil the island's geological history. Our journey next takes us to the north coast near Achadas da Cruz. This small, nearly abandoned village lies hundreds of feet below a high sea cliff. And one way to drop down or go up is on a funicular. This location gives us an opportunity to see a cross-section through numerous volcanic flows. What's even more impressive is the number of intrusions that pierce these layers. We'll see more of these intrusions a little later on. The western part of the island contains some steep ravines where some of the most recent flows can be found and locals have managed to live and work in this setting. Yet, to really get a feel for the landscape, you have to go up. And our next destination will take us to the highest peaks on the island. As you rise toward the higher elevations, you start to travel through the clouds and before you know it, you're well above the cloud layer. The last known eruptions were about 6,000 years ago, and these eruptions throughout the last 3 million years were so violent that it has destroyed any remnants of the crater. And you can tell now from the erosion how rugged this terrain is after all the erosion and the violent eruptions and a multitude of eruptions, one overlying the other with pyroclastic flows, tephra, and lava flows. This is quite the trail they've carved out. Steep drop-offs, and thank goodness for this thin little railing, because it goes way down. There are spots where the only link between trails means walking along a vertical intrusion. 
On either side, material has eroded away, leaving a very exposed traverse. This large face gives you an idea of the fractures that filled with intrusive material. You'll notice how the intrusions are not only vertical, but diagonal and even horizontal. This reflects the magma that was looking for the easiest way up through the myriad of fractures as the region bulged and cracked under the immense pressure from below. The erosion between them is actually accentuating them. And where there's tough, it's turning to clay and more easily eroded. So now you, you see those intrusive bodies. This is tremendous. We have more features coming right up. Nice example of lapilli, and this is in situ. In other words, it's right in the wall. We're not looking at stepping on a, a field of loose pebbles, but this is eventually what it'll end up as just loose pebbles. Each one is about a centimeter in diameter. Here's a nice apple crop. A lot of scoria. A lot of vesicles, a lot of gas that used to be in this lava as it was coming out. And now a lot of those vesicles are filling up with moss. There's some collapsed vesicles. You can see the orientation's horizontal, which means that they've been squeezed by the weight above them. And this is just a, an outcrop on the trail here. Some really nice banding there. This is a nice example of a paleosol sequence, which is a stack of altered volcanic ash falls and now weathered into paleosols. Spectacular. And what a backdrop. This is steep and very tiring. It's going to be well worth it though when you get to the top and get that view. There's a long hike up to uh, Ruizu Peak, but it's uh, about 1800 meters, 6,000 feet or so. The clouds are way below us out here. And on the hike up, as I showed you, you can see all kinds of volcanic uh, features um, and textures in the rocks. I identified some of the lapilli, some of the tuff. Uh, some of the flows, the intrusions. Oh my gosh, it's a, it's a volcanic wonderland here. And a lot of it is due to the erosion that exposes all this. Uh, this volcano on this island is not considered extinct. It's dormant, even though it has been dormant for several thousand years. And uh, who knows, this island may come back to life sometime. We are on a hot spot, and so anything can happen here. From above, we can appreciate just how rugged this terrain really is. Madeira's location in an ocean environment makes it particularly susceptible to erosion, and wind and water have certainly taken their toll on the island. Low-lying clouds and fog keep the island moist and prone to both chemical and physical weathering. And if you're lucky, you can be rewarded with some interesting atmospheric phenomenon from the ridgeline like this beautiful solar glory. A short stop at Ribeira da Janela is in order. Here's a nice example of columnar basalts, and they're coming out at different angles. And one thing to keep in mind is that the dimensions of these col columns and the distance between each fracture depends on the cooling rate. So the faster the cooling, the smaller the columns. The longer the cooling, the larger the columns, and the wider they are. And we can also see that many of these are curved. In other words, they may have hit some hydrothermal water or some kind of fluid, so that they cool literally from the surface of uh, the flow or from a cooler area inward. So the, the fractures grow toward the middle of the flow. Fascinating to see, and they can take on all kinds of shapes. If we walk right up underneath the columns, where we get a good view of the cross section, you'll notice that most are not hexagonal as often seen in the literature. In fact, they can be pentagons, they can be square, and possibly other shapes as well. When you first arrive at the Sao Lorenzo Peninsula, the view is breathtaking. You can't help but notice the proliferation of pyroclastic flows 
interlaced with lava flows on this peninsula. The colors and textures are phenomenal and much of the color is a product of chemical weathering and the breakdown of minerals in the ash flows. The nature of volcanic fragments also gives us an indication of the violent nature of these eruptions. So, we start our brief tour with a look at some of the pyroclastic flows. The banding you see here is typical of multiple ash falls that mix with soil horizons, and the mottled and orange look is due to chemical weathering and iron oxides that are typical in soil horizons, and that's why we call these paleosols. Here's another example of a different flow that has different textures and colors. You can notice it has more of a gritty appearance, and just above it is yet another pyroclastic flow. This peninsula is also highly faulted, and here is a particularly large outcrop, revealing offset flows and intrusive fingers. As you walk along the coastline, you can't help but notice the very deep red ash flows frozen in time in the sea stacks. And if you pan to the east, these ash flows continue on the peninsula and are cut by some wild looking dark intrusions. The tilted beds, intrusions, and faulting gives you an idea of just how mangled everything got over multiple eruption episodes. And Madeira certainly does not disappoint. 